Hello everybody and welcome to my October 2021 reading wrap up. Dane reads. So I have two books to talk to you about today. So the first is Something Happened by Joseph Heller, the author of Catch-22. Um, now this is the book I was reading when I moved into this place, which is my new house. Very exciting, I'm finally in. Um, it's a long gold read, it's what, 550 pages, but quite small print as well, but I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's in the competition for one of my books of the year. Um, I knew I was going to like it because I'd read an excerpt from it as part of the Penguin Mini Moderns box set that I have. Um, and then I, you know, bought a copy and then just finally picked it up. Um, it's basically, it's almost a bit like Stoner by John Williams, where it's like about just like a normal dude and his family. He works in an office. There's lots of great stuff about office politics in it. He doesn't really love his family, they don't really love him. Um, there's this kind of recurring theme that everyone's scared of everyone else, you know, nobody wants to upset anybody. So um, yeah, though it was a really good read, um, full review of it coming soon, 5 out of 5, would recommend. And now I really ought to go ahead and read Catch-22, you know. Um, what, one of the particular things I liked about this as well was that it was quite bleak and it was like pessimistic about people and humanity which as it happens, so am I. So I kind of related a lot to, um, was it George? Bob Slocum, there we go, Bob Slocum, the main character. Uh, related to him a lot, even though he uses prostitutes and stuff, which I do not. And then I read The Dark by James Herbert. So this was pretty standard James Herbert novel, really. The idea in this is that there's like an evil in the darkness, and when it gets dark, uh, whether it be in like cellars and stuff, or um, just at night, people go a bit crazy and start doing evil things. Um, there's a lot of like nice gore bits in this, like one of them that stood out to me, somebody got literally chopped in half and so their legs were standing and their body, had, the you know, torso had fallen. Um, so yeah, not for the faint of heart, but if you want a little bit of horror, definitely give it a go. And obviously this idea of darkness and evil going hand in hand, you see that a lot. Um, so it was just interesting to see a take on that. It was also quite cool to get like the vernacular where he'd be writing like how British people speak, like, you're what, mate? And like using accents and all that stuff. So yeah, um, weak, but still credible. Four out of five and would recommend to horror fans. Hopefully you can't hear my dishwasher going in, the, my washing machine going in the background, but I bet you can, because it's really loud. It sounds like it's about to take off. That's downstairs as well. Hello, it's a me, Mario. I have two books. So, the first one that I read for you is Little Miss Star by Roger Hargreaves. This is one of the Mr. Men books, or more specifically, one of the Little Miss books. And um, yeah, it was kind of meta because Little Miss Star just wants to be a star. And spoiler alert for this children's book. At the end, we learn she is a star because, um, let's see. She waited and she waited some more, but then at nine o'clock on the dot, the window blind was raised and there in the window, oh bliss, she jumped for joy. I'm famous, she gasped. And do you know what was there filling the whole of the window? I'll tell you now. Hundreds of books, and on the front cover of every book, there she was, and there at the top in big bold letters it said, Little Miss Star. Oh me, she gasped. And there underneath, in colour, was a picture of herself. Oh my, she gasped. And there inside was her story. And here you are, reading it. So very fun, just like 3.5 out of 5, it's a kid's book, you know, it is what it is, but I enjoyed it enough. And then I read The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test by Tom Wolfe, so um, this one's been sitting on my TBR for like years at this point. And um, a lot of my friends have said I should get to it, I should enjoy it. All I really knew about it was that there were some tie-ins with the Beat Generation, and the title is kind of very famous as well. Um, and I knew as well, actually, that it followed Ken Casey and his band of Merry Pranksters. Basically, Ken Casey, the guy who wrote One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, he had a bus, and him and his mates, all these hippies, just went around taking loads of LSD. And this is like a memoir of those times. Uh, Neil Cassidy is in this, who was uh, the inspiration for Dean Moriarty and On the Road. Uh, Kerouac and Ginsburg are both in this. A bunch of other pretty famous people as well, like Jerry Garcia's knocking around. Overall, a lot of fun non-fiction about LSD. Uh, if you're interested in psychedelics or beat poetry and that kind of stuff, you'll probably enjoy this. Uh, I gave it like a four out of five. Yeah, it was good. Full review coming soon. Hello, there's a weird ray of light coming from my light bulb. I don't know why, we're just gonna roll with it. Uh, I've got some books to wrap up for you. So, 
Then I read East is East by Ayub Khan Din. So this is a play that was turned into a movie. There's also a sequel to the movie called West is West as well. Uh, this is about a British Muslim family in Manchester. Um, kind of a com comedic play, I guess, but also, again, it looks at what it was to be a, you know, immigrant or son of children of immigrants um, in, like, rougher parts of England, I guess, um, in the 1970s. So, like, some good representation in there. But as I say, also, it was just very funny as well. Uh, solid four out of five for that. Then I read The Graduate by Charles Webb. So this one was a weak 3.5 out of 5 and I downgraded it to a 3 out of 5 on Goodreads. Um, the problem is, is that it was very insta-lovey, so I think it just worked better in the movie, the uh, Dustin Hoffman movie. So in this, he goes from basically hating Elaine to loving Elaine over the course of like literally a paragraph or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm glad I read it. Uh, it. It does feel like a first novel and it was a first novel. But again, if you like the movie, probably check it out. I did see Chrissy from uh, Chrissy Books and Berries. Uh, she gave this two stars on Goodreads, and I guess she was a fan of the movie as well. This is one of the rare few where I think the movie was actually better than the book. Then I read Hamish and the Terrible, Terrible Christmas and Other Stories by Danny Wallace. So Danny Wallace is a journalist, um, although he's also written a novel and some children's books as well as his non-fiction books. This basically, where are you Biggie and what's up? There you are. This basically has three short stories in it. Uh, they're all Christmas themed, quite amusing, like fun little sense of humor, very playful use of language and stuff. So I uh, would recommend for that if nothing else. I will be reading the rest of this series because this was actually like book four or something as well. So I've kind of read them out of order, but I just happened to see this in a charity shop, you know? Uh, probably like 3.5 out of five for it. Then I read The Wizard of Oz, or The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. This was a reread for me, um, probably a 4.5 out of 5. I do really enjoy that original story. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about it because I have done a review of it in the past that I'll link to below. Um, but this was a reread via audio to get me ready because uh, me and Joel Swagman, or Joel Swagman and I, are reading all of the Wizard of Oz books. So I also read The Marvelous Land of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Um, this follows some new characters, but we also get uh, the Tin Woodsman, who did get a name in this, and I can't remember what his name was now. I can't see it, but it got, it got, it got very confusing. Not confusing, it was just weird when you're so used to him being called the Tin Woodman and suddenly he's got like a proper noun for a name, you know? What is his name? I can't bloody find it now. But yeah, anyway, it follows like the later adventures of those lot with some new characters thrown in as well. Very, again, very whimsical, very fairy tale -y. A little bit of retconning here and there as well, but you know, it was still, uh, still worth reading. Probably a four out of five, so not as good as the original one, but I did still very much enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to continuing the series and reading the rest of the books with Joel. Uh, but I read Five Get on the Property Ladder by Bruno Vincent. So this is one of the famous five books for adults. Very funny. This is all about them buying a house and getting on the property ladder. And as I have just done that, obviously there was a lot in this that I related to. Um, things like, you know, everything being ridiculously expensive. They actually almost buy a houseboat because it's the only thing they can afford and then they accidentally burn it down. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. Pretty solid four out of five. Um, then I read Carving a Statue by Graham Greene. So this is a play, it's about a guy who's basically not very talented, but he wants to be talented and he's trying to make this statue of God. Um, and he's like sacrificing his relationships with his family and stuff for it. Uh, it's a little bit of a drama, um, but very good, I thought. Um, you can see I've tabbed out quite a lot, especially considering it's just a short play. It's only... Um, was it three scenes? Yeah, it was three acts, but each act had only one scene in the act. Um, and also, who was it that was in it? Let's have a look. It was um, Jane Birkin was the second girl in this, which is odd casting, because she was deaf and dumb. Um, I mean, I suppose she was supposed to be beautiful, but Jane Birkin is famously the one who sang, Shut him. Let me find it. I, when I started reading this book, I had to get this tune on on uh, Google, on my YouTube. Jane Burke and his Serge Gainsbourg. Uh, my friend Dave likes to talk about this song because <laughs> the, the lyrics to that Je t'aime moi non plus, that means I love you, me neither. It doesn't make any sense. 
But anyway, and then I read uh, the lyrics of Leonard Cohen. I'm just the fact that the e-cigarette has just fallen out of that there. Uh, and this is a collection of Leonard Cohen's lyrics. One of the best things about this is like at the bottom of each song there's some uh, notes about them. So um, this is an unusual Cohen song, both in its length and its structure. A simple chorus interspersed with ad-lib spoken sections. It is essentially a performance piece, the text given here being taken from the live recording, the last occasion on which Cohen performed this song. The chorus is taken straight from a New York beggar's cardboard placard, and this is uh, Please Don't Pass Me By A Disgrace. So yeah, uh, lyrics to Leonard Cohen, probably a week four out of five. I mean the lyrics are great, but I'm already familiar with the lyrics, so it was almost like a reread for me, but those extra little uh, things added some nice context, so that was good. Hello, so I have read two books. I have read uh, Love Cuts by John Hegley. Hegley is a poet. Um, He's one that people always say I'd really enjoy. You all right, Biggie? Come say hello. Um, it's not that I don't enjoy him, it's just that I do think he's a bit overrated, or at least people oversell him to me, you know? I get told about him all the time, and I'm always just like, yeah, he's all right. Uh, and this was indeed all right. It was a 3.5 out of 5. I'll read a random poem out to you. Here we go. Luton Library Verses. It was opened by the monarch and it meant a lot to me In my early years in Luton Town beside the River Lee Four new books a fortnight I'd turn up to lend And as I turned the pages each one turned into a friend In time I was a shelving lad so I could spend all day Or walking round the library or working for no pay But I wasn't discontented, please don't read me wrong They'd given me a shelver's badge and somewhere to belong And the first poem I ever wrote went in the magazine Of the library in Luton which was opened by the Queen Um. He said lend when he means borrow, so that kind of is annoying. <laughs> um, yeah, 3.5 out of 5, it's just okay. And then we have Pam Air's Surgically Enhanced, and this was another 3.5 out of 5, but slightly better, I guess. Um, what's interesting here is there's a lot of prose as well, where she sort of tells the stories behind various poems. I do like Pam Air's. I think I would have preferred this just to be a poetry collection or a memoir rather than a bit of both. But hey-ho. So uh, let's, I don't know, it's hard to find a poem, here we go, what we got? Um, devastated. Empty handed at the last we're devastated, all these weary years that we have waited. Now uncles quit the scene and we never got a bean, and in our hour of grief we are prostrated. He biked along the cliff exhilarated, the wind was in his hair, he was elated. Then uncle scribed an arc and for him the world went dark and his false teeth bit the sand and masticated. In truth his poor old brakes were antiquated, in gin his poor old brain was marinated. He thought that he could stop, but he never saw the drop, and now before his loved ones he is crated. With fittings made of brass it's decorated, fastened down with rivets bifurcated. His cat is in despair, caterwauling everywhere, but it's done that ever since it was castrated. We went to see the lawyer aforestated, who by the word of law was regulated. He read to us the will and gave to us the bill and wouldn't take a check that was post dated. So to a life of scrimping we are fated, our semi now will never be updated. We better start to save to get a microwave, empty handed at the last, we're devastated. Okay, so yeah, 3.5 out of 5 for that one. Hello, it is me. I have just one book to wrap up for you today, and that is Universal Harvester by John Darnell. So John Darnell is the lead singer of The Mountain Goats, which is a band that I'm really into as well. Uh, I think this is his second novel. What's weird about this one is it starts off seeming as though it's going to be all about uh, plot, and then it kind of goes on to become more about the characters and the place. Um, the idea here is this guy works in a video store, a bit like an independent version of Blockbusters in the late 90s. And they start to discover weird things on the tapes, like people have been taking out tapes. Um, and then adding their own sort of scenes to them and stuff and we don't really know what's going on. Um, but yeah, by the end, that's almost taken like second fiddle or whatever so um, I don't know I think it would have been more interesting if it had continued to go along in that direction but having said that I did still enjoy it it was really beautifully written as well more like literary fiction than anything I would say very cool cover as well and uh, yeah I would give it like a pretty weak but uh, respectable four out of five he also has a new book coming out soon that I'm looking forward to as well because I've read I think three of his books now so I'm looking forward to the next one. Hello, I just have two books to talk about today. The first is The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks. 
So Ian Banks is one of those authors where people always tell me I'd enjoy his stuff. And for whatever reason, I've picked up like three of his books and never really felt like falling in love with his stuff. Certainly not to the point at which I'd add him to like my list of authors who I want to read everything they've written. This was the best of them. It's very dark. Um, it basically follows like a young kid who's a murderer. Um, and we learn a bit more about that and there's bits of like the past and the present coming together and all of this stuff. Um, it was good all the way through and then the ending, for a start I didn't think the ending worked anyway, like it just wasn't very satisfying. But also it kind of uses that trope where it's implied that the reason this kid was a bit of a wrong gun is because they were born female and their father had raised them as male. And, I don't know, I just think that's a bit of a harmful trope. I mean, I can't really comment on it being a cisgender white male or whatever, but... I don't know, it just felt a bit icky, you know? So it just didn't really feel necessary, it was just like it was just chucked in there just for the sake of it. Um, and yeah, left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth, unfortunately. So, I gave it a 4 out of 5, but it was on par for a 4.5 in one of my top books of the quarter. And now I doubt it will make the top 10, uh, because of that ending, unfortunately. And so I'm still... I don't know. I don't know if I'm ever going to read Ian Banks again, to be honest, because I've also heard this is his best book. And I don't know. So yeah, then I read that, and then I read We're Not Home, a horror anthology. This was compiled by Cam Wolf. I can't really be too objective about this because I have a story in it called Not in Tamworth Anymore. There's also like Matt Wall is in here, um, Regina from Regina's Haunted Library, uh, Jeremy Fee is in here, Marie McWilliams. Most of the people in this are people whose channels I watch, you know? Um, I will say some of the stories were better than others. So I have, because it's with like indie published stuff, um, it really winds me up when there are like spelling and grammar fails. And there are at least two authors in this who had quite a lot of spelling and grammar fails, including one who didn't really know how to use apostrophes. Um, there were like one or two minor layout issues as well, um, but nothing too bad. Um, the cover's great. Um, and as I say, I enjoyed most of the stories. I think Jeremy's story, uh, The Ghost of Walt Whitman, was probably my favorite of the lot. But yeah, probably a pretty solid 3.5 out of 5, but I would recommend it, uh, especially if you're into horror. If you know any of the authors that are in this as well, obviously support some indies, and all profits are donated to charity as well. So um, yeah, one to check out for sure. All right, uh, for some reason I missed off Energy of Slaves by Leonard Cohen, which was a poetry collection of his. I gave it a pretty solid 4 out of 5. Um, I enjoyed it more than the lyrics of Leonard Cohen. I think the th problem with the lyrics of Leonard Cohen is you can just listen to the songs, you know? Whereas Energy of Slaves had some of Cohen's poetry, which, there's the cat, which I've always been a fan of. Uh, I actually used to memorise one of his poems. It was, I long to hold some lady for my love is far away and will not come tomorrow and was not here today. There is no flesh so perfect as on my lady's bone and yet it seems so distant when I am all alone. As though she were some masterpiece in a castle town that pilgrims come to visit and priests to copy down. Uh, then as a, 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 a stanza I don't remember and then it goes I long to hold some lady for flesh is warm and sweet cold skeletons go marching each night beside my feet so yeah Cohen cracking poet uh, did enjoy energy of slaves four out of five recommend it hello um, one book that apparently I also forgot to mention was Ozma of Oz which is a crime because I read that as a buddy read with Joel Swagman I mentioned the other Wizard of Oz books that I read, but I think I forgot to review Ozma of Oz. Um, very good book. I mean, at this point, I'm, they're starting to blur together, so I can't remember what happened in which book. I think Ozma of Oz... Was that the second or the third one? I think it was the third one. Uh, basically, the second and third books as well. It doesn't help that I watched Return to Oz or whatever, which was like a Disney movie. Uh, that Joel mentioned, and that blends books two and three together as well. Uh, Ozma of Oz did have Dorothy coming back and a bunch of her old friends, pretty cool bit with a riddle with the gnome king and stuff. Uh, probably, probably a four out of five, I'm still enjoying these books and I'm looking forward to reading the next one, which I believe is Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, book number four, starting that on Monday. Well anyway, it is now the first of November, um, I have pretty much finished another book but I guess we're going to save that for my November wrap up. So as always thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.